Welcome along to a little bit of coffee and a little bit of chat, gossip, rant and rave. A little complain about a little bit of everything. My name is James, the James Neil Cooper channel, coffee chat, a warm welcome. Whatever time this is broadcasted, well, it could be coffee, it could be in the morning, could be in the afternoon, could be in the evening. So wine o'clock, whiskey, whiskey o'clock, a beer o'clock, somewhere in the world there's always a chance for a beer. Um, Chinese New Year is February the 1st. It's going to be the year of the tiger. And with that, this is the third year that the authorities in China have said, stay at home, year number three. And a lot of people I could imagine in China are getting really, I am going to use a bad word, pissed off, basically related to this COVID situation, which the Chinese people, we know, Chinese government denied started in Wuhan in the virology lab. Yes, I am moving my chair, but this is coffee chat. I can do what I want. Ha ha ha. Chinese New Year. One billion, one billion people move. It's the biggest migration in the world. It's a complete nightmare if you are going to travel Chinese New Year anywhere in China. The train stations are busy, the aeroplanes are busy, the roads, the tollways are all free, so people choose to take their car because they don't have to pay the toll, uh, toll gate bill, whatever it is, and it's manic. But you could say it's the same as coming home for Christmas. So on Christmas Eve, you would see in England, for example, people migrating out of London to get to the countryside or family in different parts of the world. But one billion people do this. It's for most people, it is a seven day, at least a seven day holiday. Not all, some people obviously have to work like emergency services, doctors and nurses, etc. the same as anywhere else in the world. And I was actually reading this article. Chinese authorities are trying to discourage travel this Lunar New Year, and here's how they're doing it. So for the third year, it's discouraged because this time is the Omicron and this year more especially is the Beijing Winter Olympic Games, which um, has another story behind that. But we're not really going into that for today's coffee chat. I'm just going to scroll down. Yeah. So it says here, hundreds of millions of people in China normally travel home. China is battling COVID-19 outbreaks in several cities and regions as it prepares to host the Beijing Winter, Winter Olympic Games. Local government authorities are offering incentives and issuing public appeals to people to encourage the stay at home. You could imagine this is the third year. For some people around the world, Christmas was the second Christmas on sort of some kind of like, not as good as before because of this invisible virus that China sent us a present to at the beginning or sorry at the end of 2019 i certainly can't travel i don't want to travel as well because i don't want to wear a mask i don't want to have a test i just want normal travel and the lockdown measures in china is zero tolerance they don't care if you don't have any food if you have an animal and you're sent off to quarantine they will come back to your home and they will well put down the animal in less humane ways there's lots of videos online about that but i'm not going down that path either for today Chinese New Year, the kids usually enjoy, and they would get something called a Hong Bao. Hong Bao is basically lucky money. Lucky money that's put into a red envelope. Maybe outside, for example, your local Chinese restaurant, they have the big red lanterns and no candle inside, but there. And you may see some red envelopes on the counter, for example. And 
that would be normal for the elders to give the younger. So grandparents would give the, the teenagers, the kids, etc. And I was actually speaking to one person the, the other day, a couple of days ago, and his mum actually gave him the equivalent of about 2,000, 2,000 American dollars for um, his Hongbao, his lucky money. He went out and bought a phone. He actually bought the same as this one, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Wow. Yeah. So some families are incredibly rich and they don't know really how to spend their money. I, if I was that rich, would I give my kid? Mm, I come from a poor family. So I would say, if you want the phone, get a job because then he'll start to, or they will start to respect money. But anyhow, it's, it's that kind of celebration. It's the Chinese Christmas, so to speak. And for the third year, uh, people are going to be disappointed once again. What people will do is that they would usually watch CCTV and there'd be the Spring Gala Festival, this big New Year show with all the celebrities there. And they would have a special event in different parts of the country. Usually it would have like the it would be broadcast from Beijing live, but one of the very few live broadcasts that you have in China. I'm just going to stop for a minute because I'm using the GoPro and it may decide to switch off suddenly. So I'm just going to stop and I'll come back again. One minute. And welcome back. So the Spring Gala, the Spring Festival, the Chinese New Year TV show starts at eight o'clock, finishes around about one o'clock. But this will be, for the third year again, very subdued. It will be sort of like some performances, pre-recorded. It won't be live apart from the presenters. They will be doing a countdown. There will be some pre-recorded fireworks, even though fireworks are not allowed in mainland China because it causes so much pollution. If you've ever been, for example, to the Philippines on New Year, the regular New Year, December the 31st to January the 1st, everyone is lighting off fireworks. Everyone, the big hotels, the companies, people in home, and it's spectacular. It's so unorganized, it's amazing. But afterwards, you, you can smell the sulfur for about three or four days in the air or the whatever chemicals they use. I digress from that. How's your coffee? So if you are Chinese, I will wish you a happy new year. And if you do have some time and it's relatively safe to go out in your city or whatever, wearing a mask, do go down to Chinatown and have a look. Maybe there's the big Chinese dragon there for you to see and possibly uh, just enjoy the atmosphere. And Every year it will be a different animal. This year is the tiger. Yeah. I was born in the year of the monkey. <laughs> so what is your New Year symbol, for example? It's very different to your horoscope, um, like Taurus or Capricorn or Leo or Cancer or Libra or Sagittarius, for example. But it's more related to the year of the animal. Don't ask me the history of that one as well. I've said that quite a few times. I do actually feel sorry for the people of China in these special days in a way that they can't enjoy. And the reason why they can't enjoy is because they have the zero tolerance. I do accept zero tolerance in some cases, but not when people starve and not when they mistreat and handle the owner's animals. No way, yeah. There's got to be a humane way. But people in China, the people who work for the government, the authorities, the small person has to ask the big person, the big person has to ask the bigger. No one takes responsibility. If someone wants to go outside of their quarantine area, even if it was an emergency, they say, go and die here because they don't want the responsibility of letting someone out and it will come back to them. They will lose their job and possibly end up in the nick, prison, jail, whatever. Yeah. It's that strict. It doesn't need to be. And I do remember when COVID started in the UK and Boris Johnson was doing these press conferences and I was shouting at the TV and I say, just lock the country down, do it now, don't waffle about it. 
So what China did in that way was, yes, they did lock down Wuhan first of all, then it went on and on and on to the whole country near enough. You still can't really travel to China. If you do, one, you need a visa, two, you will be in quarantine that you will pay for for three weeks, 21 days. And Chinese people, they can leave, difficult to do, but they can leave. I've had one or two friends who have. Uh, one is in England, London, for example. And, um, but if they do come back at the moment, they have to be quarantined at their own expense for three weeks. And you don't know which hotel you're going to end up in or quarantine centre. If you do test positive for COVID in in China, then you go to a quarantine centre. And these quarantine centres are just an old apartment building or an apartment building that hasn't been completed. There's no heating, there's very little food. You're with other people who may have got the Omicron variant or Delta. So it's a breeding ground, so it doesn't make sense. There have been some videos on Weibo, which is the Chinese Twitter, for example, related to what they have been building so is it getting worse or is it getting better? You do have these shills in the CCP shills, as we, we call them, the Western people who live in China and they will say everything is fine. You don't need to wear a mask, but suddenly everything changes like that. Um, here in this country, um, how many cases of Omicron? Not too sure, actually, maybe three, four, five hundred, not a large amount, um, but it's quite simple. The law here is very strict. You go outside and you go on your motorbike or car on the street, you wear a mask, period. And if you don't, it's a $50 fine. There's no ifs and buts about it. So a lot of people like myself don't go out. I go out once a week to go shopping to the supermarket and of course get Tokyo's cat food. By the way, Tokyo is fine. He is in the bedroom next door actually having his long day sleep. He's turned into more of a nocturnal cat and likes to go out at night time. Uh, do I have anything else to say? This was just a little coffee chat for 10 minutes that you can watch on your phone or your computer or your TV or whatever. I am thinking about doing podcasts a rant and rave podcast about anything and I am actually looking for some people who would like to come and chat with me maybe on zoom and something that you I would record and then actually use on my channel to have a conversation if it's if it's someone in China for example and disagrees with my views and that's fine if it's someone in America who agrees or disagrees with my views doesn't matter where you're from I would actually be very interested to expand the horizons I'm going to take another quick break because of GoPro I'll be back And welcome back. I'm just doing a, another clip here. So if there is anyone interested, that would be absolutely marvellous. I, You may notice I do like to chat. I do occasionally, once in a while, in a blue moon, do a live stream. But I'm only chatting with people on text. I would actually have to like to have a real chat with a real person in real time. doesn't have to be live on YouTube. It's just like a pre-recorded one. Uh, if you're happy with it, then... That's fantastic. And basically, it just be a coffee chat week and we can just shoot the breeze, so to speak. Talking about anything which maybe you, you uh, how to say, as long as there's no swear words, as long as there's nothing too sensitive about it, that would be fine. And I don't have much coffee left, so <laughs> the show isn't going to last, last much longer. I... Um, I a couple of weeks ago now, it's getting close to two weeks, I did do one video and it did actually reach 70,000 views and it did actually get me to over 30,000 subscribers. So a personal thank you on this um, show as well related to that. I really truly do appreciate it. It's YouTube, I said countless times before, is a hobby for me. I, it's, in, you wouldn't, uh, for less than 100,000 subscribers, it's, you can't, 
guarantee anything. You can't guarantee anything. One day you get 70,000 views. The next day you get 500. I really don't understand the algorithms or the SEO, which is the search engine optimizer, something like that. Just don't get it at all. But I do enjoy making videos. And if I get 1,000 views, great. If I get 70,000 views, great. I can go and buy a new iPhone because the ad revenue <laughs> is there. So it's sort of an incentive, but no way. If you are thinking about being a YouTuber, do it as a hobby first of all. Once you get to targets and once something is guaranteed for at least six months, yeah, that you're getting a sort of regular income of five, six, seven thousand American dollars and your subscriber rate goes up and up and up and you have a niche market and people are interested in you because you do it in a unique and different way, whoo, then you've got it. Yeah. But to get to that 100,000 is 100,000 subscribers, I think is the magic number for that. Be honest, don't be too over sensitive. Um, try to get the American audience and uh, or an international audience is your best bet for the highest um, ad revenue, for example. I am really going off topic what I was meant to talk about for today. How do you say Happy New Year in Chinese? I really don't know. <laughs> Let's leave it there for today. Be good, be well, be safe, be happy with each other. Do pray for the people who may be suffering from one thing or the other. Just count your lucky stars, how lucky you are that you do have a house, air conditioning, electricity, the internet. Some people don't. And we wish them well. Some people don't want. We wish them well as well. Have a happy day, whatever day this is being done. But it's going to be done, obviously, before the new year. Otherwise, this video is really not going to make any sense at all. Ali Vidachi, Sayonara, Alvida Zain, Chuzi, Masalam, Shukran, Masibuku, thank you, goodbye.